Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. In this video you will learn how to create a game in Unity. Today we will create a clone of this game. The name of the game is Bounce and it was released by Catchup. As you can see this is a very minimalistic game and I really like the color palette of this game. This game was actually built in Buildbox but we will try to recreate this game in Unity. Before creating this game let's analyze what we have to create inside the game there is a ball and when you press the left part of the screen the ball will move left and when you click on the right part of the screen the ball will move right there are different power ups in this game some will slow the time and some will fast the time and there are different type of platform as well when you touch these blue platform the platform move left or right and when you touch these yellow platform the platform will fall and if you touch this pink box the player will be dead that's all i hope you are ready so without wasting any time, let's dive into Unity and create this game. To create this game, you should have Unity installed on your PC. And you should have some idea of the programming in C-Sharp. As you can see, I have created a new project. And the Unity version which I am using is 2018.3. First, let's create few folder. I will create one folder for the asset and I will create one folder for the script. Now let's create our main player which is ball. I will create an empty game object. I will name it ball. Let's change the background color of the camera. I will change it to off white. Now inside the ball game object, I will create a 2D sprite game object. I have created one texture sheet for this game. Let's import that in this game. This is the texture sheet which I have created. Now we have to convert this texture sheet into individual images. And for that, I will click on this texture sheet. And on the right hand side, I will change the texture type to Sprite 2D. And I will change the Sprite mode to multiple. Hit on Sprite Editor. And I will click on Slice. This will slice this texture sheet into individual images. These are just for the color palette. We just need the four bottom images. Let's create an apply and drag and drop the circular sprite inside this. I will reduce the scale of this game object and I will change the color to blue. Now let's create an empty game object for the platform. I will reset the transform. Inside this I will create a 2D sprite game object. I haven't created a square sprite so I will create a square sprite inside Unity. To do that I will right click, go on create, then sprite, then square. I will rename it to platform. Drag and drop this inside here and I will change the color to this not almost black I will change the scale so that it will fit the screen I will add the box collider to the parent game object and I will change the scale of this game object so that it will cover the whole platform now let's create few tag to create a tag I will click on add tag and inside this I will create few tags the first one is jumping block for the jumping platform and second one is electricity block for the electricity platform, if the player hit this block, the player will be dead. And one for the time slower, which will slow the time. And one for the time faster, which will fast the time. One for the sprint platform, that will make the ball jump higher. And one is electricity power and one is point object. We will use this tag for different game object. And now let's create a script for this ball game object. I will right click and go on create, then script and I will name it ball. And I will drag and drop this ball script on the ball game object. Open the script in editor. Now inside this script we have to create few variables. I will create one rigid body variable. And I will create a vector2 variable which is max force. This is the maximum amount of force which can be applied to the ball game object. And I will create a float variable. And I will name it force applied in sideways direction. This is the amount of force which can be applied to the ball when we hold the left arrow button or the right arrow button. Now let's create a bool variable. We will change this bool variable if we are moving left or right. I have also created a sideways movement which is of float type. Now inside the start we will take the reference of the rigid body component. And inside the update we will call a movement method. We have to create this method. So I will create it. This method is of void type. And inside this movement method, if we press the left arrow button, 
we will add the force to the rigid body in the negative x direction and if we press the right arrow we will apply the force in the positive x direction and when we press the right arrow or the left arrow we will change the moving bool variable to true and when we release the left arrow or the right arrow we will change it to false now let's create a fixed update method and inside the fixed update we will write if we are not moving that means if we are not pressing any button we will not move in the x direction I have taken the rigid body velocity into a vector2 variable and then I have changed the x value of that variable and applied that variable to the rigid body velocity. Now first let's test without applying the love function. If I directly apply the zero value in the velocity, let's see what will happen. Save it. Let's go to unity and I will add the rigid body component as well as the circle collider. I will change the size of the circle collider. Now let's create a script for the ball functionality. Inside this script, we will write if ball is hit to a jumping platform, we will add force to the ball. I will drag and drop the ball functionality on the ball game object. And I will change the collision type to continuous and interpolate to interpolate. Now let's go to platform game object and I will change the tag of this game object to jumping block. We have to make some changes on the box collider. Now let's change the size of this game object. I will scale it down in the y direction. and move it up so that it will cover the top part of the platform. I will change the color to white so that I can easily add it the collider. This box collider should cover the top part of the platform. And we want the functionality if the ball has hit this top collider only then we will apply force to the ball. Now let's go to child game object. I will add the box collider to it. I will scale it down in the y direction and I will also move it down. The box collider of the platform should look like this. Now let's open the ball functionality script. Now inside the ball functionality script, I will create a rigid body variable. And I will create a float variable. This is the amount of force which is applied to the ball when the ball hit the platform. And inside the start, we will take the reference of the rigid body. And inside the on collision enter method. If we hit the game object who have a jumping block tag, we will add force to the rigid body in the upward direction. Now let's switch over to unity. I will change the angular drag to zero and I will change the gravity scale to two. And in the force applied in upward direction, I will write 500. Let's test the application. Now this looks good. And when we release the button, the ball stop immediately. And this does not look smooth. To change this, I will add the log function so that the value move to 0 and 0 0.2 second. Now let's test the application. Now the movement looks much smoother. I don't want this to rotate as well, so I will freeze the rotation. Now let's create few more blocks. Let's create new 2D sprite game object. I will select the circular sprite. I will scale it down and change the color to this blue. I will adjust the color and I will rename it to moving block. Now add the box collider to it. Now let's create a script for this game object. I will name it block script. I will drag and drop this script on this game object. Open this script in editor. This script will use for the moving block as well as the falling block. So I have created two bool variable. One is move block and one is falling block. And I have created start moving block and start falling block bool variable which is private. And when the move block start moving we will change the start moving block to true. And when the falling block start falling we will change the start falling block to true. Now let's create a rigid body variable and for the randomness I have created a move left bool variable and inside this start let's take the reference of the rigid body and if the random dot value is greater than 0 0.5 random dot value give the random value between 0 and 1 and if it is greater than 0 0.5 we will move left else we will move right. Now inside the update if start moving block and move block is true and if we are moving left, we will add the force in the negative x direction. 
else we will add the force in the positive x direction. Now inside the on collision enter method if moving block is true we will change the start moving block variable to true and else if this is a falling block we will change the rigid body of that falling block to dynamic. Now for the moving block let's change the move block to true. And let's go to ball script and let's add the condition. If the game object which is collided with this game object has a tag player, only then this functionality is applied. Now let's get back to Unity. Change the tag of the moving block to jumping block. Add the rigid body component to the moving block game object and change the body type to kinematic. Now let's test the game. If the ball hit the moving block game object, the moving block will move. This is working good. And I don't want the moving block to rotate, so I will freeze the rotation. Now let's duplicate it and change it to falling block. This is a falling block, so I will change the move block to false and falling block to true. And I will change the color to yellow. Now let's test both of this block. If the ball hit the blue platform, the platform will move. And if the ball hit the yellow block, the block will fall. I don't want these blocks to collide with each other. So let's create a layer for that. I will name it jumping block. And I will apply that layer on these block. Now go to edit, project setting. And inside the physics 2D, I will untick the jumping block. So that the jumping block will not collide with the jumping block. Now let's open the platform game object and I will change the tag to jumping block. Now let's test the game. If the ball hit the blue block, the block will move and if the ball hit the yellow block, the block will fall. Now let's go to ball script and inside this I will create a clamp velocity method. This is not necessary but you can test it yourself. And inside the clamp velocity method will limit the velocity of the ball. First I will take the velocity of the rigid body and store it in a vector2 variable. And if the x value is greater than the max force, I will set the x value to max force in the direction in which it is moving. Mathab.sign will give the negative 1 value if the ball is moving in the negative direction and it will give the positive 1 value if the ball is moving in the positive direction. And if the velocity.y is greater than max force, we will simply provide the max force value to the velocity. I will comment this method. This is for you. You call this method if you feel it is necessary. Now I will create an empty game object. I will name it platform and I will drag and drop the platform game object inside this game object. And I will also create a moving block to empty game object. I will drag and drop the moving block game object inside this game object. Now let's create an empty game object and I will name it camera holder. I will move the camera holder in the upward direction and then I will drag and drop the camera game object inside this game object. Now let's create a new script for this camera holder game object. Open this script in editor. Inside the script I will create a player variable which is of transform type. And inside the update if the player y position is greater than the transform position of this game object. We will simply change the y position of this game object to the player game object. We will not change the x position of this game object. And the z position will be minus 10. Now let's see, I will end the video here. In the next video, we will learn how to add different functionality in this game. And before that, I want to thank you guys for appreciating my work. With your support, I am able to complete 4000 minutes in one month. And I need your support to complete 1000 subscriber task. Please consider subscribing. And if you have any query, you can comment down below. Or you can join me on my Facebook group and ask your question there. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.